Hello and welcome to Mark Rutherford's BBC School Report. The annual event where students get a chance to share the stories that matter to them. Today's news, the unfortunate death of theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking. New theatre shows coming to the West End and Broadway. A look into the recent entertainment news with a special feature on the newly released film, The Greatest Showman. So be reporting on the cultural and religious celebration that is St Patrick's Day being held on the 17th of March. And lastly, we have a glimpse at recent snow epidemic that battered the UK two weeks ago, which is lately known as the Beast from the East. Welcome to the 2018 BBC School Report. We are back again for our third year at Mark Rutherford School on Thursday the 15th of March, where students from all years gathered together and researched, filmed and produced specific BBC news reports. Let's get started on our first report, following the celebrations on the upcoming St Patrick's Day. Hello, I'm Katie and welcome to our news report. Today we'll be discussing St Patrick's Day. St Patrick's Day is celebrated on the 17th of March across Ireland and many other countries. Amongst these are Russia, the Caribbean and Korea. St Patrick's Day is the celebration of the death of the patron saint of Ireland who ministered Christianity in Ireland during the 5th century. The first ever festival was celebrated in 1996 and by the time 10 years had passed it had grown from a one day celebration to a five day celebration. Um, I usually go to my aunt and uncle's who has a party every year where we will kind of Listen to Irish music, eat Irish food, and have a couple of drinks, maybe two or three. I don't believe that Ireland should have a day off for St Patrick's Day. They celebrate it in their own way at weekends, and they find free time to celebrate. Uh, it is a, obviously a, a celebration, um, but we shouldn't have a uh, bank holiday or a day off for that. Um, we eat pretty much like at the party, we eat like stew, we eat a lot of potatoes. I don't know if anybody knows about that. Um, and also the day after, we'd usually have like an Ulster fry, nice healthy potato bread, soda bread, beans, sausage, egg, black pudding, white pudding, no calories, nothing. Thank you for listening. Have an amazing St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Back to you in the studio. Looks like there are some very exciting celebrations surrounding St. Patrick's Day. Of course, Callie. Next, we are having a look at the return of the classic theatre production, Chicago, and the upcoming musical everyone's talking about, Jamie. Hello, I'm Sophie. Hello, I'm Fanny. The world of the theatre and shows have grown recently, it's amazing right? Studies show that audience levels have jumped from 776 per show in 2015 to 801 per show in 2016. That's a lot. There are so many sparks of some of our favourites amongst these shows. There are some information of the two of the most recent openings. The newest show is called Everybody's Talking About Jamie. It tells the story of 16 year old Jamie New, who lives on a council estate in Sheffield. He is terrified about the future. With the help of his mum and his loving friends, Jamie beats bullies, steps out of darkness, and overcomes prejudice. It has plenty of amazing songs to go around in your head. And with dancing and some heartful acting, there is something for everyone. The first performances were in February, and it has been booming since. To find out more, go to www.everybodytalkingaboutjamie.go.uk. I like the shows, I like the energy that they provide. It's the same with musical concerts. It's just that thrill that you get when you are surrounded by the lighting, the effects. I'm very much a big fan of Bob Fosse and his dance style and his dance movement, which is obviously very prominent in Chicago because we get the use of the hips, the use of the flips. Um, so it's actually a dance style that I really find entertaining and relate. Yeah, I prefer going out to watch it live in the theatre as well. The, the atmosphere you get is completely different from watching something on the screen. I'd like to see um, a lot more um, jukebox musicals where we already know a lot of the music and you go along you see that and it's music you already know if you're already tapping your foot along to it. I'm sure you'll be absolutely buzzing to see one of these amazing shows, but watch out because I've heard that Drury Lane is haunted. With all that said, we hope this has inspired you to get out there and see something amazing. Back to the studio. Oh, how I love going to the theatre. I've never been, to be honest, but sticking with entertainment, we now have a report on the newly released The Greatest Showman, starring Hugh Jackman and Zac Efron. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you wait for. Black Panther's finished and we won Infinity War. Zayn and Gigi are sadly together no more. Jake stalls on ice, tempers of light, and all that was real was left behind. Don't fight it, cause it's coming for you, running at ya. Spore relief, Ma, you'll be very tired after. Love Island in the summer is getting closer. Time's up, don't surrender till the fight is over. It's final, it's time we all accept each other. 
Imagine that kid at 100 shows a hook the nation. Kylie Jenner hid her pregnancy from her friends and family. Let you know, so tell me, do you wanna go? When it's covered in all the colored lights, Jay-Z starts like up into the night. Trump and his fake news is taking over you. Oh, this is the greatest show. Me light it up, we won't come down. Gun violence can't stop us now. Watching grades come true, exams taking over you. Oh, this is the greatest show. It's everything you ever want. Stormy and Donald Trump. Entertainment is here for you. This is the best parody. Hello, I'm Lucy. And I'm Lisa. On Wednesday the 14th of March, the Year 7 took part in a competition which was held here on Ava Playground and was called Race to the Line. This competition was run by the Bloodhound team. The students were put into teams and were given a styrofoam block. In science, they got to shape it and make it into the streamline. Then in, then in art, they got to paint it and decorate it any way they wanted to. Some other subjects involved were maths and computing. Here are three examples of cars that were raced. These were best design. There were 46 cars in total being raced, but there could only be one winner. And the team that won was Team 7 from 7W1 and it went at 50 miles per hour. Here is their car. The outcome was fantastic. We had some really, really quick cars. One in particular went around 50 miles an hour, which was pretty impressive for, for the day. It was really exciting. It was amazing when they did the 3, 2, 1 and it went It was a lot more exciting than I thought it would be actually. I was quite impressed. <laughs> I think from what I've seen of it, because I wasn't there throughout the whole process, but it, like, it was really well run. I think Mr Stokes done a fantastic job. Um, and it was really, really good that you had outside businesses come as well, the RF to help you. So it looked like it was really well, um, well run and it looked like you guys were the one actually knew what you were doing. So I thought it was a brilliant day for you all. That's it from us, back to the studio. Moving on to a more poignant matter, the revered physicist Stephen Hawking died early on 14th of March. This piece is a tribute to a legendary force for good. A man who outlived expectations, Stephen Hawking, one of the greatest minds of the 21st century, sadly passed away on the early hours of 14th of March. Hawking was born on the 18th of January 1942, 300th anniversary of Galileo Galilei's death, practically being born into science. He began to show interest in scientific subjects when at secondary school, and he was given this apt nickname of Einstein, despite low academic success. At university, he was diagnosed with a rare form of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, or more commonly known as motor neuron disease. The doctors gave him two years to live, but he lived for 53 years past his lived given life expectancy outliving the doctors that diagnosed him. Oh, very sad. He's such a big character and big person in science. Uh, it's very sad when anyone dies, but especially someone as well known as him. I, he's such an iconic figure. I mean, there's no one quite like him from being in a wheelchair to do the science that he's done, um, the physics that he did, but also the books that he wrote and the way he engaged in um, public life. We talk about the NHS to appearing in The Simpsons and on the TV shows. He has such a wide appeal, uh, a very broad uh, spectrum that, that uh, he was known to. But I don't think there's anyone going to be quite like that for quite a long time. Hawking was and will be seen as a legend by many scientists. The community of science have been devastated by his death. It is unknown what caused it, but his family only stated that he died in peace. He died on Pi Day and Einstein's birthday, only emphasising the scientific aspect of him. Professor Stephen Hawking, a man who will be looked up to for generations to come, may he rest in peace. Looks like there may be another douse of snow over the coming days. Does it look like it could be as bad as the beast, Daniel? Well, yes and no, actually. The spring temperatures that we're beginning to see now after the notorious beast from the east will still be around over the next couple of days. However, in the north, especially in Scotland, those lower temperatures will be returning. Today though, in northeastern regions, we will be seeing plenty of cloud alongside the spread of rain. 
in many areas we will be able to see some sunshine, but frequent showers, potentially being heavy, heavy and thundery, will also be moving into central and southwestern areas. Later tonight in the northeast, the wet and windy weather will still be present, but snow will fall around eastern Scottish hills. Other than that, the rest of the country will generally, generally be feeling mild, with the occasional rain shower. Tomorrow, the colder temperatures will still be lurking in the northeast, with more snow over high ground. Other than that, for many, there will be plenty of sunny spells, although there is a high chance of showers developing again. Let's have a look at the notorious beast from the east that hit us weeks ago. The beast from the east is back. As I'm sure you all know, the beast from the east has hit us hard here in Great Britain. With the largest snowfall in over 20 years, with wind speeds reaching over 40 miles per hour, across Europe, 48 people have died, including a man in London who slipped on freezing water after risking his life to save his beloved dog. It caused power cuts all across England. It caused the slippery surfaces to be even more slippy. Here in Bedford, the huge icy cloud coated us mercilessly. Let's see how it affected the people in Bedford. So how did the beast affect you? The beast from the east meant all the shops were shutting, so we've stopped up for next week. Um, five hours I had to spend on a plane trying to get to Belfast. It only takes an hour to get there. We talk about the beast from the east, which normally affects you out there in the weather area we call the outside. But you've always got to be prepared. I was taught this in Cubs, taught this in Scouts. This is why I always carry my handy phone. We're here in the geography department to find out more. Oh no, the beast from the east really ruined up my hair. Look! The beast from the east caused a pipe burst in our school, which meant a four day weekend. I was gutted to hear the school was shut because of the storm. I missed my end of time exam. And it looks like it's on its way back. That's all from us in the studio. Thank you for listening to this year's BBC School Report. Please remember to follow our MRS Report on Twitter and RutherfordReport.com for more news. We'll see you next year. Thank you and bye. Goodbye.